So the base, basic story about water in, the, in all of the Western US really is that you have more water when you don't want it and you have less water when you do want it. We have our big storms in winter, that's when we have our big flood risk. And of course we have the greatest need for water in summer when it's hottest and that's on the west coast when we get the least amount of precipitation. So a good example is the state of Washington, we get half of our rainfall in the four months from November to February. And in the months of July, June, July, and August, we get almost none. What climate change is doing is, is actually making that worse. This year's drought, we had a number of rivers that uh, reached record lows, uh, which included some cutbacks. For instance, I farm on the Chehalis, and the junior water right holders were notified, I believe, around the end of July that uh, their water rights needed to be curtailed or stopped. They had to stop irrigating because they were a junior water right holder because the river was so low that the uh, river needed water for fish. Um, this is third or fourth time I've seen that happen. Uh, and that directly affects those individual producers, whether it's the dairy farmers or a neighbor that may be growing feed for them. Um, in the, you know, if you don't have water, and we had uh, record numbers of 90 and 100 degree days in July and August, pastures burn up, hay fields burn up. Uh, so that water availability on a localized individual basis uh, really had an effect on producers. So last year, 2015, was I think a big wake-up call for Washington as it related to uh, just the kinds of impacts that drought can have on agriculture. Uh, we saw a lot of people sharing water. We saw a lot of water restrictions. We uh, saw people get rather innovative about uh, using um, different crops. And then we've seen an awful lot of movement towards using um, no-till cropping because in these really dry areas, the, the less we can do to till up the soil, the better off we are for, for holding that uh, soil moisture. A lot of what we're doing already with, with our system here, every tillage pass you do, you lose moisture. So that's why we've gone back to no-till because we're losing moisture. Last year when I was planting the Milo, it looked dry as can be. You dig down an inch and there's moisture. If I would have gone through and done tillage, I would have lost all that moisture. Instead, I did the no-till and I saved the moisture. Well, we did know the drought was coming and it, it was happening and they were predicting it to continue. And so we did change what we normally would have done. Typically, after triticale, we would plant silage corn. It tends to get the most tonnage and uh, provides the most feed. However, it tends to be a larger water use crop. So we, we did experiment with using forage sorghum. There was a learning curve because we had no one had ever really grown it in this area before. And so there were some things that were done wrong and some things that were done right. But all in all, I think we concluded that it wasn't a viable option. And so if we ever have a drought situation that's similar to that again, we know we can go to forage sorghum which would use about half of the water and still provide a pretty decent yield with a decent forage quality uh, feed. Warmer temperatures means less snow. And in a lot of Western states, we rely on snowpack to store water to give us, so that we can have water in summer when we generally have drier conditions, right? And we have more need for water. Uh, so, so we're getting less snow in the future. We're seeing dramatic decreases. A lot of Western states have a lot of snow that's near the freezing point, so small changes in temperatures or the big changes in temperatures we're expecting for the 21st century are going to have a big effect uh, in, in how much snowpack we have in the, in the winter and as a consequence how much water we have from snow melt in the summer. Are we getting snowpack in the mountain or are we not? Since we rely on water from the mountains, as long as we have snow up there, we're usually going to be okay. But if there's no snowpack, then we have to start planning maybe a little differently. We've had a lot of conversations over the years with a number of tribes and farmers and irrigation districts about uh, you know, the, the changes that we see in uh, lower snowpacks, the glaciers melting uh, in the Cascades that supply a lot of the water storage in, in some of those glacier-fed rivers in the, in the Cascade system, both on the east side and the west side. I think it's pretty well known. I think it's a very expensive proposition, and there's obviously a lot of controversy about water storage, also known as dams. Um, but there seems to be a growing recognition that we're going to have to do something different. With a lot of the way we manage our crops, our, our water needs have gone down. The no-till is a big part of it. <clears throat> we use water through the dairy every day, uh, so we have a lot of recycled water that is effectively manure 
but it's really watery and that, that helps us through an irrigation process as well. For us, the water that we're using on the cow cooling is the same amount of water that we would be using to irrigate our crops. We're just putting one more use to it. We're cooling our cows and then we're using it again to irrigate the crops once it's through our manure system. So it really hasn't changed our water usage at all. If anything, it's dropped our water usage because the water we were using before with our old system was coming through the plate cooler and we'd need additional water to keep up. It's actually eased the water demands on our wells because we're using less water. Some of those practices have really helped us through like last year drought season that we were able to uh, accomplish really quite high yields even through a drought. Well, I, I think the one thing I'm, I'm continuing to learn is how good of a crop can you grow with what amount of water you're given. Uh, last year I learned a lot about how to go about it, um, getting the crop in early and dealing with canal shutdowns and stuff. So I think it's just being prepared for the worst and hoping for the best and take each year as it comes. But I, I did learn that we can get by with a lot less water than what we think we have to have. But it's a lot more difficult and takes a lot more management and it's quite a bit more intense in a drought year. Farming is by definition adaptable. That's the only way to do it. And uh, there's plenty of room for adapting, right? Water use efficiency can very likely more than make up for that difference in most situations. Our water district here it has senior water rights. And so we did not get cut back in a water short year. But that doesn't mean that we don't need to be uh, do due diligence for the amount of water we use because uh, uh, it's the only right thing to do. And uh, so we have had adequate water, but uh, I'm not so sure the time isn't gonna come where um, it's either gonna cost us more uh, by the acre foot than what we're paying and, or lack of thereof.